Welcome into this game two between the Junior Cubs and the Junior White Sox. The Cubs won the first game to push this to two games, five to one in the previous matchup 30 minutes ago. If they would have lost that game to the White Sox, it would have been over and the White Sox would be the Junior Post Oak Little League champions. But now the Cubs have another shot here as they have to win two to win the full thing themselves. It's going to be number three, Wyatt Baskin, on the mound for the Cubs. He ended up pitching one inning last game in the third inning. It's come in for Matthew Guyton, who threw a tremendous game, no, no hitter. Only gave up one run after off a hit by pitch, but threw a no hitter through six innings for the Cubs. And so Baskin struggling here to the leadoff hitter for the White Sox, Kalino Lehan. Lehan will be on the mound for the White Sox in this game too. He's going to be followed by catcher Patrick Fowler hitting second, batting third, Braden Johansson. Batting fourth cleanup, John Dominguez. And it's going to be four balls walk to Lahan. He's going to walk to first to start this game. John Dominguez cleanup hitter over at second. Third base hitting fifth, Bryson Knowles. Batting sixth in left field, Will Landers. Batting seventh in right field, Kyle Iganam Iganamides. In center field, batting eighth, Thomas Gillenshaw, and batting ninth, the first baseman, Owen Smith. So Wyatt Baskin, first walk of the game, the pickoff attempt over to Ferber, and it's Lehan sliding in safely. Going to the defense behind Wyatt Baskin, pitching or catching behind the plate, Parker Childs over at first base, Eli Ferber. Second baseman, Matthew Guyton, shortstop, Henry Van Oz, and Lehan is off, he slides into second safely on the steal. We know Lahan has good speed, the leadoff hitter for the White Sox. Henry Van Oz over at short for the Cubs over at third base, Hayes, Hayes Camarda in left field, Charlie Bookmeyer, center field, Miles Camarda, and in right field, William Gibson. Have up to the plate now, Patrick Fowler, 0-1 the count. It was a great first game between both these teams. The White Sox just struggling to hit the dominant, dominating pitching of Matthew Guyton. Going full six innings without giving up a hit. He did walk a few and hit a batter, which is where that one run came around to score for the White Sox. Other than that, it was all Cubs starting in the first inning, getting off to an early start with a two-run double early in the first inning and then scoring three in the fifth. So that's a strike to Fowler. The count goes to two and two. Gonna have a couple of guests coming on here. Some parents, some different kids out here at Post Oak Little League. So we'll have some special guests coming up on the show later. Is that strike three to Patrick Fowler? He goes down looking and it's one out in the inning for the Cubs. That brings up the shortstop for this game, Braden Johansson. Oh, that's your point. Johansson ended up throwing most majority of the game for the White Sox in game one, started and threw a full five innings. He's gonna be over the pitch count to come back and pitch for the White Sox. It's gonna be Lahan taking the mound, but Johansson over at shortstop, the three hole hitter for this team as he looks in the first pitch and that's a steal by Lehan and he gets into third safely. So Kalino Lehan with a couple steals to get the White Sox in scoring position with one out. Was a strike to Johansson, 0-1 the count. Swing and a miss from Johansson, that's strike two. 0-2 goes the count. Is that's a swing and a miss, strike three. Johansson goes down on strikes. Really unfortunate for the White Sox with the runner at third and less than two outs. Now it's going to be the cleanup hitter, John Dominguez, who's going to try and score one here for the Sox. He takes the first pitch high for ball one. 
Kalino Lahan over at third base was got the only hit for the White Sox in that first game against Wyatt Baskin, who came in the third inning, and then Matthew Guyton came back in to finish it. As now Guyton over at second base for the Cubs. This one's hit to the left side. It gets by the third baseman, Camarda, but Henry Van Oz gets it, but his throw is not in time. It's John Dominguez's speed beat out that throw from Van Oz. It's going to be an RBI single for Dominguez, scoring Lahan. It's going to bring up the five-hole hitter, third baseman Bryson Knowles. They call him BK. So BK here with an opportunity is the pickoff from Baskin and it's Dominguez sliding back into first base safely. Baskin should be out of this one. I mean, he did give up the walk and a couple of steals, but then struck out the next two batters and it was a grounder the left side for Dominguez. Could have been out as this one goes high and inside for ball two count goes now to two and oh. And off is Dominguez, and he's going to slide into second safely. Throw not there in time to Guyton. No tag applied. And three steals for the White Sox early to try and get on the board here against the Cubs. Never led in that first game. Now with a 1-0 lead over the Cubs here in the top of the first inning. Two outs. And he's off. Dominguez going into third base, standing up as that pitch would just a little outside for Charles to get to it. He did grab it, but didn't have any time to stand up and throw that ball over to third base. So it's another steal for Dominguez. And now runners at third, no outs. And Baskin's going to hit BK there. Bryson Knoll is going to go down to first on the hit by pitch. And even though the, the White Sox weren't able to get, any, get anything there. It is gonna be runners on the corners with two outs. They do lead one to nothing. Now stepping up to the plate, the left fielder, Will Landers. A big opportunity for his club to put them on the board. So runners on the corners, two outs. A little one to three from Baskin there and both runners are back to their bases safely. So that one just misses the outside corner for, or that's exact, excuse me, it's strike one. Does clip that outside corner to Landers. Landers. The right hander trying to get something going and that's going to be a steal from Knowles. No throw from Childs as defensive indifference there with the runner at third base. So now two runners in scoring position with two outs. And this one's hit by Landers over the left side foul down that third base side. That ball's in the dirt. The count goes to one and two. We have runners on second and third with two outs. Baskin trying to get out of that one, and that one runs outside, ball, th ball two. Two's across the board here now for Will Landers.
That one gets inside to Landers, has to back away. The count goes full now, three and two. So Landers with a big opportunity here. Runners on second and third, swing and a miss from Landers. He went up for that one. That would have been ball four, but instead it's strike three, ends the inning. White Sox get one there, leave two stranded. We go to the bottom of the first inning, White Sox leading the Cubs one to zero. The White Sox leading the Cubs one to nothing here on the mound. It's going to be Kalino Lehan. He's going to be going up against Miles Camarda, the leadoff hitter for the Cubs. He's down the count 0 2 early. And that one's in the dirt. Camarda doesn't go for that one. Count goes to one and two. Three straight strikeouts, or three strikeouts for Wyatt Baskin back in the first inning, but a walk. And an RBI single from John Dominguez scored the first run of the game for the White Sox. Now Lahan trying to make sure they keep the lead here. They didn't have a, a lead at all in the first game between these two. So they were trailing two to zero early and then we're trailing five to nothing as that's a walk. Excuse me, I think we're having some trouble with the scoreboard out here on the junior field, so that's gonna be a walk issue to Miles Camarda. First walk issue of the game from Lehan. As both teams walk the leadoff batter, Lehan walking Camarda and Baskin walking Lehan. Now up to the plate, Wyatt Baskin, and Camarda's off, and he's there, fat, the throw from Fowler, the catcher, not in time to get it there. Joe Hansen there on the catch, but no tag. Camarda steals second safely. Now, no outs runner. It's in scoring position for Wyatt Baskin to help his case on the mound. And the pitch from Lahan gets in there. Baskin having to back away from the ball count goes to one and one. as that pickoff attempt goes into the outfield and thinking about coming around to score, but he's gonna get back into third safely as Miles Camarda. The pickoff attempt went to the outfield and picked himself up and ran over to third base with no outs now. Camarda at third, 
with no outs. Baskin faces a 1-1 count here. Is the White Sox struggling to hold the runners on? And check swing there from Baskin. And that one in there for strike two to Baskin. 2-2 two, two the count goes for Lehan. Lehan, a great right-handed pitcher for the White Sox. Got to see him earlier this week against the Braves when they came out and won that one. This one's hit to the left side by Baskin. It's the shortstop, Johansson. Grounds it, throws it over to Smith for the first out of the inning. 6-3 ground out for Baskin, but he is going to score. That is going to score Camarda from third base on the ground out. The score is now 1-1. One one. So one out, tied at one. Matthew Guyton now up to bat for the Cubs. Guyton was the, was the pitcher from last game. And he takes that pitch high. And away for ball one. And a swing and a miss from Guyton there for strike one. The count goes to one and one. Slehan trying to hold the score at one here. Is, takes that one inside and it goes to the backstop. Count goes to two and one. That one inside to Baskin. Count goes to three and one now. It's a guidance, excuse me. Swing and foul back to the backstop. Stay alive here. Go to a full count is guidance three, two, one out. Nobody on. Both these guys, both these ball clubs getting after out to it after a 25 minute intermission. Give these guys a little bit of time to warm back up again after that game, game one win from the Cubs 5-1. to one. This one's popped in the outfield. Center fielder Gillenshaw getting under it. And he's going to record the second out of the inning. As Guyton took that all the way to a full count, but just couldn't barrel it up straight enough. Just popped it right up in the center field. Gillenshaw's glove. That brings up the cleanup hitter now for the Cubs. The catcher, Parker Childs. Childs with a couple nice hits in the previous game. See if he can get a two-out rally going for his team as he chops this one foul down the third baseline. It looks like they're gonna call it fair. Excuse me, Childs just stood there at the plate thinking it was gonna be a foul ball and that's gonna end the inning. 5-3 ground out for Childs, the Cubs score one. We go to the top of the second inning, score tied between the White Tops and Cubs at one.
All right, top of the second inning between the Cubs and the White Sox. We're going to be tied at one here. It's going to be the White Sox up to bat, and we're bringing in a special guest here, one of the players of this Juniors Post Oak Little League teams, plays for the Braves, Grant Pierce. Welcome in, Grant. How you doing? Thank you so much for having me on the show. Um, I'll just tell you a little bit about my Atlanta Brave if, Braves experience. Yeah, go ahead. So, you know, forming the bench is such a good time. Oh, give us a second. This one's hit to the uh, shortstop Van Oz. He grounds that, throws it over to Ferber for out number one. That was Kyle e Economides for the first out of the inning. Great job. Great. Good hit, Kyle Economides. Okay, so I'll just tell you a little more about myself. Um, the bench. The Atlanta Braves had fun. Oh. The experience was tremendous. I think, I think I went about one for 15 on the season. Pretty good stuff if I do play it so. One for 15, pretty pretty average for you, Grant? Is that what you would say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still working on the swing, know what I mean? Yeah, riding the bench for the, for the Braves. Riding the bench, yeah. it up for the good players. Hey, you know, those role players need a role too, you know what I mean? When, when do they bring you in, Grant? Usually late in the innings, you know, courtesy run, something like that? Third inning, if I do say myself. It's, it's right field. I made, I made some good plays in right field. Made some good plays in right field. What's your favorite position, Grant? Uh, I'm going to go with the shortstop position. Shortstop position. Okay. Okay. I got you. I got you. Okay. So tell me a little bit about yourself, Grant. Other than baseball, what do you like doing? And, and how old are you? What grade are you in? I'm in the sixth grade. Um, uh, I like playing uh, I like playing baseball. Mm -hmm. I also like lobster. Lobster? Okay. Good stuff. Big seafood fan. I am. Okay. What else you like doing when you're not on the on the baseball diamond, Grant? Uh, I'm, I'm a golfer. If I do say my, so, so my, if, if I do say so myself. And that's a swing and a miss from Gillenshaw. He goes down on the stri uh, goes down on strikes for the second out of the inning. We're here with the junior Atlanta Braves, Grant Pierce, talking to him a little bit about his season. How do you feel like the season warmed up? You know, y'all. Y'all went. Y'all actually went down to these White Sox. We're, we're watching right now. Tell me about that game. Tell me about how you were feeling after that tough loss. Okay, so we're a good team, you know, just countless errors, the little things that make us a losing team. But I think we could have pulled through if we didn't have those little errors. Know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's about the little mistakes. And it's it's a lot about the defense. You know what I mean? Can you? Uh, be able to get these guys out when they put the ball in play, especially at this young level. The defense isn't necessarily always, you know, put in a priority rather than hitting an individual stats. But really, when it comes down to it, team defense wins a lot of your ball games. Could not agree more. They had that one kid, um, Kalino Lahan. Yeah. A great, a great ball player, if I do say myself. <laughs> and we're seeing Lahan actually on the mound today. That's Owen Smith swinging and missing at that one. The count goes to two and two. Wyatt Baskin still on the mound for the Cubs. You know, if if he keeps practicing on the diamond, he could almost be as good as me one day. Almost, <laughs> and, almost. And, and this one's lined up the middle by Owen Smith, the nine-hole hitter for the White Sox, getting a little two-out hit there for his club to stay alive. That's going to bring back up the top of the order. And you mentioned it, Kalino Lehan. Want to talk a little bit more about his stuff on the mound that you got to see there on uh, on Wednesday? I do say so, so myself. He is throwing the gas. The gas, huh? Uh, and what and what kind of what kind of gas is that for you? 65, 70? No, I'm thinking I'm thinking high 70s. High 70s, huh? Great wow. player. Great player. Wow. Well, Grant, you like your you like all your teammates or anything? Anybody you want to give a shout out to right now while you're on the air? I really like to give a shout out to the owner of the seat 22 2022 seed club mr will swanson mr He'll will come swanson on the mic shortly yep we'll have will swanson coming on the mic shortly another braves teammate he'll be on in the bottom of the second inning it's kalino lehan fouling back that pitch to the backstop count goes to one and one Can I shout out one more go ahead mr hutton brown he is known for eating the pancakes okay such a great food and my friend Chico over here. We're here with Grant Pierce, a player for the Junior Braves. How many years you been out here at Post Oak Little League, Grant? Mm, I'll count. The Mustangs, the Tigers, the, Ri the Ironbirds, the River Bandits, the Rockies, the Braves. This is my sixth year. Sixth year. 
as a postokian. Wow. I'm coming up on my seventh as I play next year. Yeah, looking forward to playing next year too. You playing yes. any in the uh, I think I'm in the summer? Play. Summer ball for you? May oh yes, I'm actually taking a trip up north. Up north, nice. Um, I think I'm gonna migrate to left field next year. Actually, and get the start in left field. Really get some progress in eighth grade. I think I'll be maybe a third baseman if I'm lucky. Yeah, but that's gonna be a steal there by Owen Smith. Got down from first to second base. Late throw from catcher Childs. And Smith is in there safely. 2-2 two, two the count, two outs to Lahan. Owen Smith is a speed demon. And the pitch is in the dirt. By Baskin, count goes full. We got a full count for Kalina Lahan. Um, the pressure may really get to him. I think, but he, I've seen him, he thrives under pressure. I think this one's gonna be a good hit. As far as I know, Grant, I think it will be. I, I think, maybe left field. To one of the best left fielders in Post Oak Little League, Ford Bennett, there. And that's a Ooh. swing and a miss for Lahan. He goes I down on strike, swinging. That'll do it for the top of the second. And our special guest, Grant Pierce. Grant, thank you for being on with us. Grant Pierce, signing off. Thank you for having me, Mike. We go to the bottom of the second, uh, tied at one between the Cubs and the White Sox. We'll be right back. Bottom of the second inning, Cubs and White Sox tied at one. We have another special guest, this time by the name of Will Swanson. Will, how you doing? I'm good. Glad to be on the show, Mike. Absolutely. Well, my name's Kyle, but that's okay. Kyle. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Will. Um, I'm a Brave. I play right field. I'm on the bench. And you're on the bench. All right. Well, we have the Cubs up right now. They're going to be led by their shortstop, Henry Van Oz, Kalina Lehan on the mound. For a second inning of work, Will, tell me, how old are you? I am 12 years old. 12 years old. And what, what school do you go to? I go to Kincaid. Kincaid. You like it over there? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Count goes to one and one. What do you like to do outside of baseball, Will? Oh, uh, just kind of hang out with my friends. Kind of hang out with your friends? or all, Do all, most of your friends play baseball or do other things? Yes. And that one's in the dirt. Count goes to two and one. Tell me about how you're doing in school. You know, you got exams coming up, end of the year coming around. You know, you're doing okay, keeping those grades in check? Yeah, I got one more week left. I gotta push through. Trying to push through it. Absolutely. That one's fouled into the dirt from Van Oz. So you were here for that game on Wednesday. Will, tell me a little bit about it, how you felt in that game. Yeah, it was a, it was a close one. Um, yeah, they had Johansson on the mound. Throwing some good strikes. Oh yeah, yeah he was, and this one's hit right up the middle by Van Oz. It's going to go to the center fielder Gillenshaw, but it's going to be a leadoff single 
for the Cubs here to start off the bottom of the second inning. So nice hit there from Van Oz. I'm sure you grew up playing with a lot of these guys. I talked to talked to your friend Grant earlier. Tell me, how long have you been out here in Post Oak Lily? He says he's been out here six years now. Yeah, this is my uh, third year. So I played two years in PVs, kind of took a little break and mm -hmm. all that. Okay. okay, what position do you like to play? I like to play third base, but I need to be a little bit more realistic. So outfield, usually. So usually outfield, but you like playing third base? Yeah. I should have asked Grant this, but tell me, who's your favorite ball player right now? Right now? Ooh, that's a tough one. I like Mike Trout. Mike Trout. Can't go wrong with the greatest hitter in Major League Baseball right now, that's for sure. Uh -huh. Over there with the Angels and Shohei Otani. Uh -huh. Or Alvarez. Or Jordan? Yes. Yeah, the Astro. Big, big Air Jordan fan yeah. you're talking to right here. I love, I love Jordan Alvarez. Just has that great plate discipline and power. One of the best power hitters in the league right now. I think he's tied for second or might be second in the American League in, uh, in home runs this year with 10. So, yeah, like if he half swings, it's still like dead center gone. Yep. So Eli Ferber going down in strikes for the first out of the inning. Eli Ferber had a big double play last game. Yeah, he did. He did over at that absolutely right at that first base side. Grabbed it over there, stepped on the bag for the for the double play in the bottom of the seventh inning yeah. as they were leading five to one. They just needed three outs, but it was a little tricky situation with runners on first and second, no outs. Yeah. Big cut there from Hayes Camarda. And a strike two, excuse me. That's actually number 22, Ford Bennett, up there for the Cubs right now. Ford is a very good left fielder. As you heard it here first from Will Swanson, Ford Bennett, a good hitter. He can do a lot at the plate. Very, very versatile. Can play multiple positions. Oh, here at Post Oak Little League, we're here for the Juniors Championship. It's Game Two. The Cubs were able to pull out Game One against the White Sox and force the Game Two. And that's Ford Bennett going down on strikes with a swing and a miss there. Do you know how many pitches oh, Matthew Guyton has last game? I don't. Unfortunately, I'm not keeping pitch count up here. Um, just keeping just straight score. But I'd have to say he definitely got up there close to that 95 pitches yeah. Um, yeah. that you're supposed to pitch. I'll tell you that is coming up now is Charlie Bookmeyer. Bookmeyer fouls this one back to the left side. Or... Er, Excuse me, this looks like it's going to be J.P. Whitley, the left-hander in for the Cubs. Swing and a miss there, goes to strike two. Did you play baseball when you were growing up? I did. I played a little bit. I played all throughout Little League, played Pee Wee ball when I was a young boy and growing up playing in Little League, played a little bit of select ball and played my freshman year in high school and then I ended up putting it down, got a little bit too burned out and that's going to be it for J.P. Whitley and the Cubs goes down on strikes. We go to the bottom of the second inning, Cubs and White Sox still tied at one. Thank you for our special guest, Will Swanson. Hopefully we'll see you on the show later. See ya. Signing off.
Top of the third inning, Cubs and White Sox are tied at one in this game two between the Juniors Championship at the Post Oak Little League. And it's going to be Patrick Fowler fouling this one off to the left side. The White Sox scored one in the first, and the Cubs scored one in the first, and we've been scoreless since then. Top of the third inning. Have another guest appearance, another student with us, Ben F uh, Fuque. Yes, is that how you say it? Yes, sir. And uh, talked to his dad a little bit earlier this week, Mike Fuque, who is the president of the junior Post Oak Little League. Ben, how are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great, doing great. So tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do out here at Post Oak. Are you part of the junior, minors, majors? What, what, what league are you in? My name is Ben Fuque. I'm 13. I play juniors. Playing juniors, I've played seven years at Post Oak. Next year will be my eighth year. It's a very fun league. Just get to hang out with buddies, play your favorite sport, just get to mess around. It's a lot of fun. Absolutely. As Patrick Fowler lines one into the left field center gap, and he's on first base with the leadoff single for the White Sox. That brings up shortstop Braden Johansson. So tell me, Ben, how your series went, how your playoffs went. What, what team did you say you played for again? I played for the Astros. The Astros. Nice. Love the Astros. Big Astros fan. Yes, sir. Same here. My season this year, we were a very good offensively team. And in the playoffs, we just couldn't really get it together, didn't really do too, too strong, and didn't really go that far. I'm guessing you meant defensively on that side of the ball, or are you referring to the offense steal as, as Patrick Fowler just took off to second base? Easy steal there. So it was the offense that y'all are struggling with, something that y'all were known for earlier in the season. Yes, sir. We were really known for offense. Our first six batters, very strong, could drive the ball throughout the field, everywhere. And defense was a main struggle for us. And who would y'all end up going down to in that, in that series? The Cubs. The Cubs. Swing and a miss there from Johansson. Count goes now to one and two. Runner on second is Fowler. Here with Ben Fuque, one of the players out here at Post Oak Little League. Ben, tell me a little bit about yourself. What do you do outside of the diamond? I love to be outdoors, hanging out with friends. On the weekends, I'm either hanging out with friends or I'm with my brother in our, in our creek by our house. Nice hunting, fishing, all the fishing above. Myself. Yeah, a big fisher. Ben is, likes to spend some time outdoors with his friends. And been playing baseball a long time. You said out here at Postal Oak Little League eight years, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Eight years. Do you plan on, plan on continuing to play, go to high school and everything yes, like sir. that through high school? Yes, sir. I want to try and play baseball as far as I can go. As far as you can go. And tell me, what, what position are you going to try and make that happen at? I really want to pursue pitching, but right now I'm having difficulties with my UCL, which is a muscle in my elbow. And besides pitching, I am a first baseman. All right, so Joe Hansen goes to first base on the walk. Patrick Fowler got the steal there, and he's at third. It's going to be runners on the corners and no outs. It's going to be their cleanup hitter, John Dominguez, coming up for the White Sox as we have a little bit of a mound meeting between Coach Burrow and Wyatt Baskin. So pitcher and first base sounds a little bit like myself. Are you a left-hander? Yes, sir, I am left-handed. Usually that's where they shove us over there yes, at first base or pitching, and got a good arm there as a lefty, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And are you, start, are you a starter usually or a um, come in relief? I go in between. Sometimes I'll start, sometimes I'll relieve. I, re I usually prefer to relieve because I like having the stress. You like having the pressure on yes, you. Sir. So you like coming in, bases loaded, one out, you know, top of the order, trying to get out of an inning without giving up any runs. Is that right? That's my kind of situation. Nice. Nice. So closing situations, I'm sure yes, sir. you also like as well. Yes, sir. So we have Baskin back on the mound after that quick coaches meeting. And runners on the corner still here with no outs. It's going to be John Dominguez up, taking off from first base is Johansson. And there's no throw from the catcher, Childs, on the defensive indifference. So, Ben, what, what grade are you in, and where do you go to school? I'm in seventh grade, and, and I go to Spring Branch Middle School. Spring Branch Middle School. This one's hit up the middle by Dominguez, possibly going to score two, but they're going to keep Johansson at third, and it's just going to be an RBI single for the cleanup hitter, John Dominguez, to put the White Sox up now two to one. So great RBI single there 
by Dominguez. And, yeah, I'm hoping so. You know, last game it was really the Cubs just running away with it with getting off to a quick 2-0 start and then scoring three in that fifth inning. Don't lean on – please don't lean on that. And then um, after that, you know, the White Sox were able to get one later, but it, it didn't really matter at that point as they were just too far behind as Dominguez took off and he's in a second base with the steal. Yeah, it is with them up to bat. Bryson Knowles now 3-0 and on the count. It's Baskin struggling a little bit with his command here in this situation. Runners at second and third, no outs. This is a situation you like to come into, huh, Ben? Sir, this is my kind of situation. Just coming in, th throwing strikes, letting my defense do the work. You looking forward to uh, a high school you're looking forward to going to? What, what high school are you, are you currently zoned to right now? I'm currently zoned to Memorial High School, but okay. if not Memorial, I will probably go. Second Baptist, okay. Yeah, I got to, t I got to, I got a chance to take a look at those guys this year. I, I covered a lot of the St. Thomas uh, Eagles games over there in that Taps division. So Second Baptist, a really good school. I'm, They're going to the state championship. Are they? Are they really? Yeah. Yes, so they were. They were one of the best teams in that district. Might have even been one or two. It was either them or Concordia Lutheran, um, if I'm not mistaken. And that's going to be. A walk to Bryson Knowles. He's going to be on first base. It's going to be now bases loaded, no outs, and Coach Burrow's out there to talk with Baskin. You got to wonder if he's going to take the ball from him or not. And looks like he is. Coming in is going to be the first baseman, Eli Ferber, who goes in to get to get his first base glove. We're going to take a quick break here during the pitching change. Ben, it's been great having you on. Thank you want to shout anybody out while you're uh, still here? Shout out to my manager, Swanson. Very good guy. All right. We'll be right back. Uh, top of the third inning, White Sox leading 2-1, to one, bases loaded, no outs. Back in the top of the third inning, no outs. White Sox up to bat, bases loaded. New pitcher on for the Cubs. It's going to be Eli Ferber, his first batter. It's going to be Will Landers who swings and misses at that first pitch for strike one. Will Landers, the right-handed first baseman now on to pitch for the Cubs. Got to see a little bit of him on Wednesday as the Cubs 
Now having to go to Landers here. He's 0-2 in the count to, to Landers. And that one gets by the catcher, Childs, and another run scores. That's Braden Johansson coming in to score for the White Sox on that wild pitch. They now lead 3-1 to one over the Cubs. As it's going to be Eli Ferber, excuse me. Eli Ferber on the mound for the Cubs, moving over to first base. It's going to be... Matthew Guyton. And moving to second base is going to be Van Oz. Takes that pitch in. Count now goes to two and two. Or excuse me, he goes down on strikes. Will Landers striking out there for one out in the inning. Still bases loaded, or excuse me, uh, runners on second and third now for the White Sox with one out. That brings up Kyle Economides. And Economides takes the first pitch in for strike one, grounded out to the shortstop back in the second inning. And Ferber trying to come in here. Without giving them any runs, this one's grounded to the second baseman. That's Van Oz thrown over to Guyton for the second out of the inning, but it did score another run for the White Sox. That's John Dominguez coming around to score. It's going to be the fourth run now scored for the White Sox third this inning as they let off Patrick Fowler with the single. Brayden Johansson then walked. John Dominguez. RBI single after that, and then Bryson Knowles walked. They changed the pitcher, Wyatt Baskin, and Eli Ferber came in, striking out one, and Kyle Economides grounded out for the second out of the inning. Now runner at third base is Knowles, and up to the up to plate is the center fielder, Thomas Gillenshaw. Gillenshaw striking out back in the second inning, swinging a miss there for strike one. The count goes to one and one. Going to have some more special guests coming up here soon out here at Post Oak Little League for this Juniors Championship game. And swing and a miss. Strike two from Gillenshaw there. A little bit ahead of that pitch from Ferber. One of you kids grab a Topo Chico out of that cooler. Yeah, please. I don't think I'd qualify you as a kid, though. <laughs> Count now at one and two, two outs. Runner at third base is Knowles, the pitch to Gillenshaw, and he goes down looking for strike three. So Eli Ferber coming on for the Cubs, getting a one, two, three inning done after he came on, but three runs were scored from that. Four to one, the White Sox lead as we go to the bottom of the third inning.
bottom of the third inning. The White Sox leading the Cubs four to one here. Have another special guest with us. This one is gonna be Eduardo Sanchez. Eduardo, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Eduardo. What do you do out here at Post Oak Little League? Um, this is my sixth year at pool. I'm on the Giants this year. Play second base. Nice. Nice junior Giants. Okay, so how'd y'all end up doing out here in these playoffs? Um, the playoffs, we lost our first game, won our second, and lost our third. A couple of tough games there for you, huh, Eduardo? Yeah, Who'd you end up losing to? Do you remember? Padres. The Padres. Padres, I think they were one of the top teams in the uh, in the yeah. league this year, huh? Yeah, it was us. It was them than us. Wow. So pretty pretty tough matchup for you there. Yeah, I think it was 4 3. Yeah, it's the two, the two Giants. No pun intended, having to go up against each other there. But now we see the Cubs and the Braves kind of in the lower, kind of in the middle tier brackets out here in the Juniors League. So kind of interesting there. And that's William Gibson going down on strikes. It's going to be Kalina Lehan back on the mound for his third inning of work and strike out to start the side. He ended up, after giving up a single to Van Oz, had three straight strikeouts the last inning to Ferber, Camarda, and Bookmeyer. Now starting off this inning with a strikeout to Gibson. Back to the top of the order for the Cubs. Center fielder, Miles Camarda, coming on. And he hits this one down the third base line. He's running in. He's going to slide into second base safely. So Camarda getting to the first pitch, lining that one down the third base line, getting a nice double to start it for the Cubs. Yep. So, Eduardo, how old are you? I am 13. 13. And what school do you go to? St. John's. St. John's. Okay, what – is that the St. John's, the Mavericks? Yes, sir. Okay, so you're the – and they, they have a um, – the high school is St. John Mavericks too, correct? Correct. So it's all kind of down the same yes, sir. the same plan. So I'm guessing elementary school, you were also over there at, at um, St. John's? Yeah. Um, kindergarten, I was in, uh, at AOS. Uh-huh. But then after that, I was at St. John's. Do you like St. John's? Yes, sir. I love it. Yeah? Got a lot of friends over there. Do a bunch of a bunch of kids come over here to Post Oak Little League as well that you go to school with or not not as much? Uh, there's only three other kids that come. It's more, more the Kincaid kids in here. More the Kincaid kids, gotcha. This one's popped up in the outfield. It's the center fielder, Gillenshaw, in on it, and he's going to record the second out. That was Wyatt Baskin flying out to center field for the second out of the inning. That brings up second baseman Matthew Guyton. We're here with... Eduardo Sanchez. Eduardo, you're over at St. John's. How are your grades looking coming down to end this school year? Looking okay? Yeah, they're good. Yeah? What's your favorite subject in school? Um, I don't really got a favorite subject. I guess history, maybe. History? You like learning about what's, what's happened in the world in the in the previous stuff. What do you like doing outside of the diamond, Eduardo? Um, hanging out with friends, playing sports, and video games. Video games. What kind of video games do you like playing? I like to play a lot of COD and MLB The Show. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. I used to play a bunch of MLB The Show last year. Um, not not as big of a fan as the game this year, but really like playing MLB The Show and got to love some Call of Duty as Matthew Guyton now down 0-2, two outs from Lehan. And you got anything to say about these guys on the field, Eduardo? I mean, you got to see a lot of them this year. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, as what a play there from Knowles, the 5-3 ground out to Matthew Guyton. And it looks like they're actually going to call him safe there. Looks like he ran that one out. It was hit to the third baseman, Knowles. And looks like Guyton ran that that one out down the first base line. Down the first base line. So just run down infield single there from Matthew Guyton. But sorry, go, go back to speak yeah, about some of these kids out here on the field and, and what you got to know from them. Henry Minosh just warmed up in the bullpen, just finished, so it looks like he might be coming in next inning. Kalino was looking really good through the first couple of innings. And it's a ground ball to second. Yep. Bubbled, picked, and he's out. And he's out, and that stops a run scoring from Camardo was over at third base, and that's going to end the inning. No run scored for the Cubs there. We go to the top of the fourth inning. White Sox leading the Cubs 4-1. to one. Want to thank our special guest, Eduardo Sanchez, for hopping on the broadcast with us. Thanks, Eduardo. Thank you so much.
top of the fourth inning here for this championship juniors post oak little league game between the white Sox and the cubs the white Sox currently leading over the cubs two to one eli ferber back on the mound for the cubs for his second inning of work and coming in for the white Sox, number 42 ben pilop um, ben pilop thank you appreciate it i'm here with another special guest jack harper here with me jack how you doing i'm doing well and you i'm doing great doing great glad to be out here at Post Oak Little League, Jack, what uh, what league do you play in? Do you play in minors, majors, junior? I was in juniors this year. My juniors this year. year? Okay. Final year as a junior. And what team did you play for? I was on the Astros, like Ben. The Astros, like Ben. Okay. Yes, sir. Perfect, perfect. And y'all, and how how y'all's playoff run ended up going? Uh, lost first one to the Dodgers, one second to the Yankees, and then lost, of course, to the uh, Cubs. To the Cubs. Gotcha. Tough Cubs team, you know. They are. Who was? Do you remember who was on the mound against y'all that game? Or Guyton. who was it? Guyton. Guyton. Yeah, just ended up throwing the no hitter in game one. Uh, that was pretty good to see. Miguel, <laughs> appreciate it. As we have Ben Pilop or Pilop, appreciate Jack coming in here. Three zero the count from Eli Ferber, who he, who he's in for his second inning of work. And Jack, how old are you? Where do you go to school? I am fourteen. I go to Kincaid. Kincaid. Okay, you like it over there? I do. Got a lot of friends that go over there at Kincaid as well, right? Yes, sir. Uh, ben goes over to Kincaid and Eli on the bump and Matthew. Nice. And Ben's over there, I think, with a, with a walk there, four balls. And Pelops on with a walk to lead or to start off this inning for the White Sox. So you said sixth grade over at Kincaid? Eighth. Eighth grade. Eighth grade, excuse me. And then where do you plan on going to, to high school? Kincaid as well. Kincaid, so kind of just like the St. John's, it's kind of the same thing with Kincaid. Did you start elementary school at Kincaid as well? I started at Second Baptist. Okay. Um, went up to fifth grade and went to Kincaid. Okay. Sixth. Gotcha. What's your favorite subject in school? Algebra, probably. Algebra. Big num numbers guy, I assume? Uh, yeah. Do you like figuring out solving, solving equations, solving problems and stuff like that, or why, why do you like algebra the most? Um, I just find it enjoyable. It's kind of like a puzzle and... Just the way my brain is smart, I guess. I just enjoy it. Yeah, absolutely. I was a big math guy myself, too. Algebra is great. Ended up teaching some of my nieces and nephew earlier this year who just started high school and started sixth grade. So it's been it's been fun teaching them. Uh, high school algebra gets a lot of fun. So you like solving problems and equations. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun for you over there at Kincaid. So what, what, uh, what position do you play out here on the diamond, Jack? I'm usually a catcher or a first baseman. But this year, I was more of a outfielder catcher first baseman but playing majority outfield this year what, what position do you like playing the most um i like being a catcher which is probably the position i'm best at yeah more mobile side to side than front back i got you and that's a four that's a walk to kalino lehan back-to-back walks for eli ferber as he's having trouble on the mound on his second inning of work explain to me and the catcher you know you're kind of in control of everything you know you kind of showing the defense what to do giving them the signs as well as giving the pitcher signs you know you you're really if you're really if not the most important position on the diamond behind the pitcher and a lot of times you are more important than the pitcher so it's a lot of responsibility to be a catcher and i'm sure you like taking that responsibility and control over as well sometimes i do yeah and um when you have a situation like this you're down 4-1 four fourth inning championship game this is either what a catcher is for or squanders in and at times, I would squander it like uh, I was in minors, semifinal game, and it was like close, six inning, six five, or whatever. Let it pass ball by, winning run, scored. Or tying run. Yeah, tying yeah. run more. I'll call it an insurance run. It turned to seven five, and it's unfortunate, I guess. Yeah, yeah, and those plays happen. You know, you can't, you can't get everything, and a lot of it is about the uh, chemistry you have with the pitcher. You know what I mean? Do you know exactly? what pitch is being thrown because a lot of times pitchers can get you know thrown off on signs you know um and and having that good pitcher catcher chemistry is really important as well so we have a 1-0 count runners on first and second up to bat now is patrick fowler after two straight walks from eli ferber it looks like he's throwing two straight balls to fowler what kind of advice would you give ferber right now in this situation jack Honestly, um, I would call it a mountain visit and probably say that 
calm down. Uh, it's definitely really stressful up there. I've been in this situation before as a pitcher as well. And it's stressful giving up two straight walks, your confidence shattered, and you're in probably game two, biggest game of your life. You just need to calm down. If you need to like guide it in there, lob it, doesn't matter. Yeah, as you, as, as you see that one kind of lobbed in there right there, the off-speed pitch from Ferber, and it did end up getting called a strike. 2-2 two -two goes the count now after Fowler had an early 2-0 count. Here with special guest Jack Harper coming in, swinging a miss there from Patrick Fowler. Looks like Ferber kind of got Fowler a little bit puzzled there. He was kind of late to that swing, even though it was an off-speed pitch. I think he kind of just froze him, and he was late to it. He already in the uh, catcher's glove when he swung. Exactly. Super late to it. It looks like he uh, thought. Uh, uh, fastball high, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then just bottom dropped out of it. Kind of like a slider, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Froze him on that off-speed pitch from Ferber. That brings up the 3-0 hitter, Braden Johansson. Braden has a strikeout and a walk earlier on in the game. So Jack, what do you like doing outside of the diamond? Um, honestly, I, I like staying at home, kind of talking with my friends. A lot of my friends play the uh, same video games as me, so we do that a lot. And um, just kind of relaxing when I'm not on the diamond, because that's what I do mostly nowadays. Yeah, so. just say you got baseball 24-7, you play 12 months out of the year? Or? Mostly 12 months. Uh -huh. um, Winter is kind of like my time off until January. Yeah. But I'm doing a summer league this year for high school prep with okay. some other high school kids. So okay. Who's putting it on? Is it Kincaid or it is it someone else? So there, one's by Kincaid. The other one is by a local coach here. Uh-huh. Archie Corbin pitched uh, three seasons in the majors. Oh, wow. So he knows his stuff. Looking forward to, looking forward to that, I, I assume, yes, getting better and stuff, trying to work on your skills as – Brayden Johansson here with a 2-2 count, one out. Tell me, Jack, what do you most like to work on out here in the baseball field? Are you more of, you like working on your hitting? You like working on your fielding? I'll tell you myself, I was a left-handed pitcher, and I always struggled with hitting. I was always scared of the ball, backed out of the box. Uh, I could, I, I was great on the mound and did some really great stuff, but when it comes in the in the plate, I was awful. So what what do you like, what are your weaknesses, strengths? What do you, what do you want to work on, improve on? If this was me two years ago, I'd probably say I want to, work on hitting because mm -hmm. like you said I would go out of the box just get scared yeah but now it's definitely more of a uh, oh and that's strike three called the Braden Johansson sorry to cut you off there Jack uh, that was a huge strike three called Braden was already on his way to first base he thought it was a walk and he flipped his bat and he goes down swinging on strikes or he goes down looking on strikes excuse me so that brings it now for uh, runners on first and second two outs as Eli Ferber, with two straight walks, is starting to come back and, and work back into it. But back back to what we were talking about, Jack. So you were talking about you were you were scared to hit in, in the start, and then now two years later, what have you come to find out? Come to find out, it's honestly not that scary. Um, it would only stay for a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, um, sore throat. No, you're alright. And um, honestly, but I'm more comfortable in the box. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry. You are. Right. And um. Ooh. Oh, there you go. <coughs> and I uh, had a really good second half of the season. So on the way, hit 500 postseason, I think. So. Yeah. So so you're starting to come together, hitting wise and stuff. Now, I'm guessing it's more of um working on just certain situations, working in the field and stuff like that, and trying to. It seems like you play all around the field. Uh infield outfield catcher so trying to really um bring all those skills together there for you i'm assuming is now the count goes to three and one to john dominguez the cleanup hitter for the white Sox. dominguez two for two with two rbi singles back in the first and third inning so we'll see if dominguez can get another rbi single for his team here the counts three and one the pitch from ferber just inside and that's going to be a walk to Dominguez. Three walks this inning. Now brings up the bases loaded. If it wasn't for the three walks, he has two strikes in the inning. So Ferber trying to get out of this one. And looks like the infield's coming in. But he's telling him to back away. Yeah, because he thinks he has it here. And they're just trying to settle him down, I'm sure. is like you were talking about. 
trying to, um, you know, make sure, you know, I'm sure he's feeling the pressure, feeling the moment a little bit. Right, and uh, Gaiden was on my <coughs> Kincaid team this year, and he was uh, pitching a lot. No, not pitching a lot. He was in the uh, center field a lot. Mm -hmm. And, of course, he knows a lot about pitching. He's been pitching here. And um, he's, he, he's probably knowing and telling <coughs> forever at this point, relax, man. And, of course, he's playing first year, but out of Kincaid, he's really fast. You get a... Uh, Tracked on ball as well. He's out in the outfield. Yeah, great. Yeah. He's a great athlete. I mean, we saw him on the mound this last game. He was doing some really great work. As now Ferber has to go up against Bryson Knowles. Knowles 0 for 2. Got a hit by a pitch in the first inning and walked in the third. And a 1-1 count now with bases loaded for Bryson Knowles to try and get some more runs on the board for the White Sox as they lead 4-1 to here. In the top of the fourth inning is that one's in there for strike two to Bryson Knowles. Pretty pitch. Yeah, it was. You see Ferber working, trying to keep the hitters off balance, really, with the with the fastball and the off speed. And it seems like the off speed's really been working well for him here. This one's fouled off to the first base side. How long you been out here, Jack? I mean, this is game two. I'm sure you've been out here a little while, huh, watching all these games and stuff? Yeah, I was at the uh, hat ceremony at 3 o'clock, and um, so I've been out here for a few hours at least. Yeah. So uh, it's like 9 o'clock now, maybe <coughs> like six hours. About six hours, yeah. Fun day at the ballpark on the weekend. So. so far. As Ferber... Gets that one to go through strike three. Absolutely. Knowles frozen on the pitch and huge eruption from the Cubs bench there as Ferber, er, Ferber was really struggling early. Two straight walks, then came back with two st straight strikeouts. Walked the next batter, then came down to finish the side, striking out the last batter in, in, batter in Bryson Knowles. So no runs on the board for the White Sox there. They still lead 4-1 to one as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Want to thank our special guest, Jack Harper, for hopping on the broadcast with us. Of course. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning. The White Sox leading the Cubs here four to one. They had stranded bases loaded there in that top of the fourth inning. Now on for the Cubs, Henry Van Oz, the five, six, and seven hitters. And it's gonna be Kalina Lehan back on the mound for his fourth inning of work. Wanna bring in another special guest, another student out here at Post Oak Little League, actually twin of our first guest appearance. We had we have Lee Pierce twin of Grant Pierce. How you doing today, Lee? Good, how are you? Good, good. So how did your game on Wednesday go? You you started, you were out there at, at second base, and I saw you a little bit as uh, as this one's popped up by Van Oz in a no man's land. Both uh, Gillenshaw and Joe Hansen running into each other there. It's going to be Henry Van Oz with a single, hitting one in shallow center field. So tell me how that game went on Wednesday for you, Lee. How were you so, feeling? It, really, it didn't really turn out how we wanted it to. We we put one on one one on them in the first inning. We put two on them in the second. Defense was good. Third inning, we just sort of fell apart. 
errors really killed us. We went, so we started Webb Lewis, put put in John Massey, then we came into um, we put um, Henry Groves in, but he stayed in for the rest of the game. He did, yeah. As I bringing up y'all's um, bringing up y'all's score sheet now. Want to talk a little bit about how you did? First, uh, first appearance there. You had a walk, yes. and you got all the way to second base, and unfortunately got to end the inning. Nice place discipline you had there in the second inning. Is that something you kind of look forward, look forward to, or are you a guy that gets to the first? You no, know, a lot of guys get to the first pitch. As this one's hit down the first baseman, Smith Smith throws over to second, and Johansson can't catch it. That's going to be safe on that one as Henry Van Os slides into second base safely. And that's going to be Eli Ferber on first with a single. So runners on first and second, no outs. We're here talking with Junior Bray, Lee Pierce, about how he did on Wednesday. And did you did you bat the third, or was that, or was that John Massey that came in? It was John Massey. I batted the... I believe it was the fifth inning. So you went down with the strikeout. Yes, sir. I yeah. Did. And who were who was who were you facing that game? Do you remember on so the mound? They, I believe they started. Um, For the Cubs. I believe it was um, Henry Van Austin that they came in and put in Eli Ferber. Yeah. Chip. It says here. It looks like it was you're exactly right. Henry Van Austin came in for three innings. Oh, there's a three. And that one's another shot right into that. Little no man's land is like where we want to call it shallow center field. That's that's number twenty. Hayes Camarda getting that one there for the Cubs, and now that gets it bases loaded. Now no outs for Kalino Lehan to try and get out of this one. Cubs starting to make their way back into it. Yes. There's another hit in no man's land there. So Lee Pierce, you are twins with Grant Pierce. Yes. Tell me about how it is having a twin. It's it can be good at times and bad at times. I mean, most of the time we get along, but sometimes we fight. But yeah, is it? It's part of it. What What do you think is a big difference you would say between? Because I'm sure you have friends that have like older brothers or younger brothers yes. and stuff. What would you say is the difference between having a twin brother and having like an older or younger brother? It's really like, I would say, it changes a lot of things definitely because like. With a brother your same age, you're doing like everything together, like all your friends, like me and Grant, we all have the same friends. But like older brothers, it's older, I mean, like it's everything. It's just more, more and more. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah, so you, you feel a lot more connected to your twin brother rather than someone would say their older brother just because y'all have all the same friends, y'all run in the same clique and yes. stuff like that. Got you, got you. So what are the big differences between you and Grant that you would say? What are Probably some big differences? Our personality, we look nothing alike. I mean, mm -hmm. if you were to see us, you, you couldn't even tell we were related. Really? So are y'all, um, what is it? There, it's So y'all aren't, um, as that's a walk issued to... Charlie Bookmeyer. That's Charlie Bookmeyer, okay, because it's either him or, or Whitley. I was just waiting for the number. So that is Charlie Bookmeyer there with a walk to score a run. That was Henry Van Oz coming around to score after he had a leadoff single in the inning. Still bases loaded, no outs. And Kalino Lehan really in some trouble here as the Cubs now only have a two run, or are only trailing by two runs and trying to get the double play here. Johansson, they get him. Johansson to Dominguez to Smith and they get the double play. The Cubs are able to score another one, another one run from Ferber but William Gibson going down with a 6-4-3 double play. Great play turn there by Johansson and Dominguez. Yep, really impressive and keeps the White Sox their lead now as they lead by one 4-3 here. They have a runner on third base. That's going to be Charlie Bookmeyer. Or excuse me, that's going to be... Miles Camarda. Yeah, Hayes, Hayes Camarda. Miles, is, is that older brother. Is that it's, Miles? It's Miles. Miles Camardo over first. Okay. Yeah, he, he's a really good hitter. So, Contact. 
So Miles over at third base. And huge double play there from William Gibson. Now come up. Now coming to place is Miles Camarda. So that is so that is Hayes Camarda over at third. So Miles Camarda coming up in a big spot here for the Cubs as they trail one, swing a first pitch strike, and and he fouls it back. And that's kind of what we were talking about earlier, Lee. Is you said you were you were a guy who doesn't swing at the first pitch. Kind of you know what I you know what I realized from you is what you do is you do the Jose Altuve. You stand up in the box and when the pitch comes, you kind of you kind of duck and use your size to your advantage. That's what I like to do. So, I mean, yeah. I like to draw walks. I mean that's. I feel like I can always use that to my advantage because I mean, I'm obviously smaller. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, I like to get up to the plate, like just feel around with the pitcher. Like cause I don't, I don't like swinging at first pitches. Yeah. I, I, I like to see what he's pitching like. Gotcha. So you're not one to swing and attack at the first pitch. You're one to really kind of gauge how the pitcher's doing, where he's throwing, and then you'll make your decisions going yes. from there. And I remember seeing you. I'm, I. I memory works crazy for me. I remember that, that walk you had in the second inning, and I just remember, I think it was the second or third ball, I don't remember what it was, but it, man, it looked like a strike, but you bent down so far that I feel like the oh, umpire yeah, just thought it was high. high. Yeah. And uh, and I thought that was pretty funny, smart tactics there at the plate for a I guy like, like you. I like to with the pitcher. I mean, oh, yeah. Anything to throw them off, I'll do. Yeah, yeah. and you, do you like playing second base, or is there is, is there another position you play, or is it mostly I mean, just second I base? I used to catch, but second's more of my dominant position, I feel like. Okay, okay. As oh, this one's hit right up the oh. middle, Johansson, though, with a great fielding play, throws over to Smith for the final out as Miles Camarda. Pretty tough there. I Really, I'm sure he thought that was going to be a hit up the middle, but Johansson had other things to say. So the White Sox able to get out of this one without – Without giving the Cubs the lead, the Cubs do get two, though, as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Cubs leading the White Sox 4-3. to three. Want to thank our special okay. guest, Lee thank Pierce, again. Me. Absolutely, man. Great, great pleasure.
Top of the fifth inning, Cubs or White Sox leading the Cubs four to three. It's going to be the White Sox up to bat. They're going to be let off by their six, seven, and eight hitters leading off the left fielder Will Landers. It's going to be Eli Ferber on the mound for his second inning of work. I have another special guest. I want to welcome in here James Leffler. James, how you doing? Good. How are you? Doing great. James, tell me about yourself and what you're doing out here at Post Oak Little League. Well, And so what happened? Regular season champs. I mean, y'all y'all had everything in the bag. It should have been a cakewalk here this championship game. What happened? You no. Know, last game against the Cubs, we, our bats weren't really awake. Couldn't really hit. Couldn't really get on base, so couldn't really swing. You know who was on the mound for the Cubs at that time? Ryan. Pitched the whole game. It's pretty interesting. You know, I've heard that a lot from a bunch of these guys that have come up, all my special guests. and. Seems like a bunch of them, you along with the Astros and I believe the Braves or one of them all went down to the Cubs and, and Matthew Guyton was the pitcher. Yeah, uh, Guyton's definitely their ace. Yeah. About it. yeah, he ended up just throwing a no-hitter in this game one. Yep. Um, ended up giving up one run off hitting a batter, but other than that, ended up giving up no hits in that game as Landers takes the count to two and two. So, James, you were on the Padres. Tell me what position you played. Uh, I played third, and I played first, and a little bit of catcher. First, third, and a little bit of catcher. So you played all around the infield. Yep. As that's going to be a bad flip and running down as Will Landers as he leads off top of the fifth inning with a walk. And that brings up Kyle Economides. He grounded out 0 for 2 so far in his outing. Runner on first base, though, is Landers. So, James, playing first, third base, and catcher, which did you end up liking the most? You no, know, I always grew up, and I played my whole life playing third base. Mm -hmm. So that's probably my primary position. And then I just started playing first base because we didn't really have a first baseman. Mm -hmm. And then when Grant, our ace, was pitching, I caught him a little bit. Okay. So, only, so you only caught one pitcher? And was that mostly uh, because of the chemistry between you all, or was it, was well, it something else? Honestly, we didn't really have a catcher catching because the person that was catching the whole season got hit in the collarbone mm -hmm. when, when he was pitching. And uh, so, so I caught him, I volunteered, but that's actually how I got injured. Yeah, I was going to ask you. So you were telling me the last game of the season, season you got injured. You want to tell me a little bit about how that went down? Well, we were playing the Marlins, and uh, the ump was calling outside pitches, and there's a lefty up to bat. So Grant threw a ball out, uh, outside. And I just caught it wrong and jammed it, and it fractured. Oh wow! So this is your—that's your catching glove that you had it on. So you caught the ball that he threw, it, but you but you caught it wrong. And did you feel it right away, or, or what was it? It was very sharp pain right into my. So was it a fastball? Was it pitching the dirt? Was what what was it? Was it just a regular? It was. I think pitch? it was. Uh, I think it was fastball. Yeah. Fastball. That just came in and like. Immediately as you hit your glove, did you catch it wrong? Did it? Did you not catch it cleanly in the pocket, or what? Yeah, I what was it? Full on my thumb. Wow. Wow, that's tough to hear. So, so you got a cast over here on your left hand. I know nobody can see, but James over here with the cast on. How long are you gonna be in that cast, James? One more week. Uh, One more week, James will be in the cast, and that's Kyle Economides grounding out. It's gonna send the runner Landers over at second though on the ground out. One out for the White Sox, that brings up their center fielder, Thomas Gillenshaw. James, that's so unfortunate, man, that you that you injured yourself a lot. Only a week left, though. That's what's great about being young like yourself. You know, you can bounce back off injuries. Shouldn't be a problem, and you know, with your young age, I'm, I'm sure you'll come back even stronger. So, so that's a good thing. And uh, so, where, where do you go to school? How old are you? What, what grade are you in? Uh, I'm at, I actually go to Kincaid. Kincaid? I'm in seventh grade. I'm 7th grade, 13 yeah. years old, going to Kincaid. What's your favorite subject in school, James? Probably math. Math? Yes. I was very, that, was, that was what Jack had to say as well. He says favorite subject was math. We've got a lot of good algebra out there in high school. Both my parents were accountants, so nice. I grew up in a numbers family. I was always great at math myself. Nice. As Ferber throws this one in to Gillenshaw for strike one. 1-1 one, one goes to the count. As the White Sox now only have a one-point lead, it was the Cubs scoring two there in that last inning off three straight st uh, singles from Van Oz, Ferber, and Camarda. Van Oz and Ferber came around to score. 
And now we're at a 4-3 ball game as this one gets fouled back by, by Gillenshaw for strike two. One-two goes the count. Tell me, James, who's your favorite, who's your favorite team that you like to play with, uh, in, in Major League Baseball? Who do you like following? You know, Astros. Yep, the local, the local team, of uh, course. You know? Is there another favorite team you got out there that you like watching sometimes? I like, I like watching the Braves. Braves because of Cunha. Yeah, uh, can, can you believe that uh, the Atlanta went all the way last year, won the World Series without Acuna even being healthy? Yeah, I know. That was pretty crazy. And then uh, I like watching the Blue Jays because George Springer. And then Dodgers. Yeah, oh, Dodgers. You can't be an Astros fan and a Dodgers at the same time. You're going to have to figure that one out in your head, James. Yeah. Can't, can't be a Dodger and Astro both. It's not allowed. As Gillenshaw in with a one-two count. Who's your favorite player that you like watching, James? Are you, you said you play third base. Are you a big Alex Bregman fan? Who are some of the yeah. other players you like watching? Alex Bregman is definitely one of my favorite players. As this one's popped up over the first base line, did they get him out? And they did. Wow, Gillenshaw getting out there. Is he had a pop up over the first baseman's head in Guyton. Guyton tried to get to it, just not in time. But Bookmeyer or Ramirez, the, the left, the right fielder, excuse me, got to it, threw it over to second, and was able to get Gillenshaw. So he just tried to outrace that and got out sliding into second base. The runner, Landers, advances to third, but there are two outs in the inning. So Gillenshaw with the single tried to turn it into a double there as it hit into the shallow, shallow right field. And now Ferber facing Pelop and Pelop rips this one into the outfield for a RBI single, or excuse me, that's Owen Smith, the first baseman. Smith ripping that one into right center field, and that's going to score Landers from third. That brings up the White Sox 5-3 to three now on that RBI single from Owen Smith. Nice piece of hit in there by the White Sox with two outs, scoring in another run. So big Bregman fan, you said you're a big George Springer fan. You know, George Springer, when he lived out here in Houston, my, my buddy actually was lived in that same neighborhood as him, got to see George Springer, was um, playing football or soccer with his kids over at, over at some fields back by my house and ended up saying hello to him. Really nice guy, George Springer. That's cool. Yeah, uh, I was at uh, my friend Henry. He's actually playing second right now. Uh, yeah, Van Oz. Yeah, Bregman was right by his house, so we backed over and said hi. Oh yeah, so you got to meet Alex Bregman then, huh? Yep. How was that? That must have been really cool. What'd you What'd you get to say to him? We just We just said hi and uh, we just got a picture with him. Didn't Didn't really want to bother him too much, you know. And that's going to be a steal from Owen Smith. Smith taking off and sliding into second safely. Now runner in scoring position. Two one with two outs. Top of the order. Colino Lejon up to bat speaking with the guest speaker James Leffler here the junior Padres third baseman for this year and James what do you like doing outside of the diamond uh, I like hanging out with my friends uh. and this one's down the third base line it is fair as Kalina Lahan is going to go into second that's going to be an RBI double scoring Owen Smith from second base there bringing their total now to six to three is the White Sox starting to run away with it? Sorry for cutting you off there, James. You're good, you're good. But like hanging out with friends, any anything like, else you enjoy doing? I like uh, going, going and eat lunch on Sundays with my family. Yeah. I like playing the show. Yeah, Diamond big show. big the show fan. Yep. Do you play uh, Do you play Diamond Dynasty? Oh yeah. And yeah. Uh, and building building your team right now, I'm guessing, huh? Who's your who's your favorite pitcher so far to work with in in the show? Either Degrom or Shohei Otani. Shohei Otani. I will say I played a lot of the show 21, and Degrom was was very good. Shohei was more of a um, he throws really fast, but after you get a after you get a hang of his uh, of his release point and everything, you can really start to pick him up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so there was a guy I really liked playing with. Um, the, the Tigers Verlander last year. I haven't I haven't played this year, but I played a bunch last year and almost collected the entire, almost every card, believe it or not. I ended up loving pitching with Verlander, and then Nolan Ryan was a lot of fun to pitch with. Just those just those guys that throw that high speed. It's really tough to 
to hit those 101 mile 101 mile an hour pitches in MLB The Show. And look like this, Ferber got Lee Hahn coming off the bag, and Lahan's now caught in a pickle, and he ran outside of the base pass. He's going to be tagged out, and that's going to be it for the Cubs in the final inning. White Sox getting two, and that brings them their total now to six as they lead the Cubs six to three. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. want to thank our special guest, James Leffler, for coming on. Thank you, James. Bottom of the fifth inning, White Sox leading the Cubs 6-3. to three. It's going to be the Cubs up to bat. They're going to be led off by Wyatt Baskin. He rips this one into left center field, and going back and getting it is Gillenshaw. Gillenshaw getting that to record the first out of the inning. As Baskin thought he got one in the gap there. And it's going to bring up their three-hole hitter, second baseman, Matthew Guyton. Guyton one for two with a single in the third. He was also the man on the mound from game one who ended up throwing a no-hitter. And swing and a miss from Guyton from the first pitch, and that's strike one. won the count to Matthew Guyton. Quick one out for Kalina Lehan, who's on the mound for his fifth inning of work. Swing and a miss from Guyton there, and that's strike two. Like I was saying earlier, Guyton in that game one threw a no-hitter, only gave up one run, had a hit by pitch to, I believe, Brayden Johansson, who came around to score the only run of the game for the White Sox. A little bit different outcome here, and Lahone got him there, froze Guyton on that off-speed pitch. Goes down looking for the second out of the inning. It's the fifth strikeout of the game for Kalino Lehon, who's been dominant so far. Gave up three hits in that fourth inning, but was able to get out of there with only two runs scored. Here comes Parker Childs. Grounds one over the shortstop, Johansson. Johansson with the high throw, but the first baseman, Smith, it's going to get back on the bag there and tag that for the final out of the inning. One, two, three inning for the White Sox. We go to the top of the sixth inning. 
White Sox leading the Cubs 6-3. Top of the sixth inning, new pitcher on the mound for the Cubs is going to be Wyatt Baskin, their starter. And first pitch hitting is Patrick Fowler. It's going to rip one over the shortstop's head and line drive for a leadoff single. White Sox leading the Cubs 6-3 to three here in the top of the sixth inning. Scoring one run in the first, three runs in the third, and two runs in the fifth. Now here in the sixth against Wyatt Baskin. And this one's in the dirt to Braden Johansson. Fowler taking off from first base. He's going to get into second base standing up safely. Johansson, one of their, one of the White Sox best hitters, has kind of struggled today against Baskin and Ferber. Ferber, back on first, was the man who came in in that situation where Baskin gave up three straight singles and a walk. And Ferber came in. Gave up a couple of runs, but really did great work striking out a lot of the batters he faced. And now handing the ball back over to Baskin now as they trail by three runs trying to get back into this game. I was saying earlier, Braden Johansson, <clears throat> 0 for 3 or 0 for 2 with two strikeouts and a walk. Also a run scored back in the third inning. So he takes this one high and away for ball three. Count goes to 3-0. and 0. As Baskin came on to pitch one inning in that game one, game one game where the Cubs beat the White Sox five to one and pushed it now to a game two. That pitch in there for a strike count goes to three and one. And now the Cubs trailing by three after winning that first game five to one. White Sox came in the favorites of this game coming out of the winner's bracket. And 
taken off again is Fowler. He slides into third safely, and that's going to be a walk to Braden Johansson. So Baskin coming on, giving up a single, and now a walk. Runners on first and third, no outs. Cleanup hitter for the Sox coming on now is John Dominguez. Dominguez looking at that first pitch in for a ball. Johansson takes off, and he's in the second base safely on the defensive end difference. So wind starting to pick up out here on the junior field of Post Oak Little League. Wind is blowing out straight center field. And that's a high and inside pitch from Baskin, ball two. I'm sure Dominguez is looking all the way here. Is Baskin struggling with his command? And that one's in there for Baskin for strike one. Dominguez, RBI single in the first inning and an RBI single in the third, as well as a run scored and had a walk in the fourth. This one's popped up into the outfield. This is the center fielder, Camarda, coming onto it. He gets it, runner tagging from third is Fowler, and he's going to slide in safely. White Sox now leading 7-3. to three off that tag up from Fowler and Dominguez with the first out of the inning flying out to the center fielder Camarda but was able to score one on the sacrifice fly so now score goes to seven to three the White Sox leading the Cubs one out and Braden Johansson should be on Second base, maybe now third if he tagged up there. And we're going to have another pitching change come on here for the Cubs. Looks like that's going to be number four, Henry Van Oz. So Van Oz will take the mound for the Cubs. We'll take a short break. We're in the top of the sixth inning. White Sox leading the Cubs 7-3 to three with one out. Top of the sixth inning, White Sox leading the Cubs 7-3. New pitch on the mound for the Cubs. To number four, the right-hander, Henry Van Oz. First pitch into Bryson Knowles is low and outside for ball one. Braden Johansson on that sack fly was able to move over to third base from second. And this one's popped up in the infield. It's going to be Guyton running over to it. And he catches that very unorthodox play from Guyton as the win may be messed up that one. I don't know if he saw it, but regardless, got the out anyway. So two outs now for the Cubs. And Henry Van Oz coming in, holding that runner at third, at least for one out. Now coming up to the plate, Will Landers. He's 0 for 2 with a walk and a couple strikeouts. First pitch swing and fouled this one back to the backstop for strike one, 0-1 oh, the count. So these Cubs came out firing early. This game, first game started at 5 o'clock and got off to an early 2-0 start and then ended up keeping the lead, pushed it to three, pushed it to 5 to nothing at the end of the 5th, and then the White Sox were able to get one in the bottom of the 7th, but it wasn't enough, and that pushes us to a game two. This one gets by Landers and the catcher, Childs, and coming in to score is Joe Hansen. Second run scored of the inning for the White Sox, and 
and brings their total now to eight as they lead the Cubs, eight to three. Wild pitch there from Van Oz, and it's the shortstop Baskin, who just got off the mound, who's calming them down there. Will Landers getting back into the box. Count is two and one with two outs. Swings, and this one's hit to the left side. It's the third baseman, Camarda, fields it, throws over to Ferber to end the inning. A couple of runs scored for the White Sox to extend their lead to five. They lead the Cubs eight to three. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. You're watching the Post Oak Little League Junior Championship here on Vibe Live. Bottom of the sixth inning, White Sox leading the Cubs eight to three. We have a new pitcher on the mound for the White Sox. It's gonna be number two, Bryson Knowles. And it's gonna be Henry Van Oz up to bat for the Cubs as they trail by five runs. Van Oz, the five hole hitter, five, six, and seven coming up for them as Count goes to one and one. Bryson Knowles, the new pitcher on the mound for Kalino Lehan. And it looks like they're just gonna trade positions as Knowles was at third. Joe Hansen now moving to third. And Lehan going to play short. Everybody else stayed the same. And as Van Oz fouls this one off the third base side, Count goes to one and two, no outs for the Cubs. They ended up winning the first game five to one, which brings them to a game two. This one actually hits the back of Van Oz's leg to lead off this sixth inning. And they have a runner at first with no outs. That brings up the first baseman, Eli Ferber. He stands in, get Bryson Knowles. Almost a quick pickoff attempt over to Smith, but not quite in time from Bryson Knowles. Take it off there is Van Oz. And he dropped the ball. That was a Lehan. Lehan would have had it as the umpire at first called him out. But with Lehan dropping the ball, Van Oz slides in there safely. It was a really close play. Could have been called either way. Great throw from the catcher, Fowler. Just not quite in time and not the best catch from Lehan. As he tried to tag and catch at the same time, it would have been a tough play regardless. Ferber takes that one outside. Count goes to 1-1. One one. 
Ferber on the game. His one for two had a single and a run scored back in the fourth inning. Oh, he rips this one. This one's deep into left center field, and it's the center fielder Gillenshaw getting to it. And that's going to be the second out of the inning. Gillenshaw has great range out there in center field. We've seen him come out with some tremendous catches. And that was another fine one there as he was running to his right. The right-hander had to come across with his glove to get that one. And he records the first out of the inning. That brings up Hayes Camarda. Camarda hits one to the shortstop, Lahan. Lahan up, throws it over to Smith and gets that out. Second out of the inning for Hayes or for Bryson Knowles and the White Sox. 6-3 ground out that advances Van Oz to third base though. So Cubs threatening with the run here. That brings up Charlie Bookmeyer. See if Bookmeyer can do something here. With a runner at third base and Van Oz and this one hits Bookmeyer on the backside as Bryson Knowles struggling a little bit with the command here back. Two hit by pitches in this inning. One to the runner at third base, to the runner at third base, Henry Van Oz, and now to Charlie Bookmeyer. Now that brings up number eight, William Gibson. Gibson takes the first pitch outside for ball one. And the Cubs trying to start a two-out rally here with two outs and runners on the corners. Knowles looks in for the sign. This one's popped up over the left side. Johansson run into the wall and it's gonna go foul over near that street. And here next to Post Oak Little League Fields. Count goes to one and one to Gibson. Now it looks like Bookmeyer taking a big lead over at first. He's thinking about going. And we have a balk as Knowles balked. Both runners will advance. Van Oz getting home to bring the Cubs trailing now only by four, eight to four. And Bookmeyer going to second on that. So Cubs now trailing by four. This one's ripped by William Gibson into center field. It's going to be runners on the corners and two outs. This is William Gibson with a single there to advance Bookmeyer to third base. So runners at first and third, two outs. That brings up top of the order now for the Cubs and Miles Camarda. And Gibson almost getting picked off there at first, but sliding back in safely from the pickoff attempt from Knowles. Knowles taking a good look at first base and Gibson and another pickoff attempt. Gibson sliding back in safely. See Knowles here able to get out of some of these batters here as Camarda hits one of the second baseman, Dominguez. Dominguez thrown over to Smith and that'll do it. So not exactly one, two, three, how you want it for the White Sox, but they are able to get out of there with only giving up one run. We go to the seventh inning, or excuse, yeah, we go to the top of the seventh inning where the White Sox can extend their lead even more before the Cubs come out for one last chance to score some more runs, either tie it or take the lead. We go to the seventh, White Sox leading the Cubs eight to four.
Top of the second inning for the Post Oak Little League Junior Championship here. It's the White Sox leading the Cubs eight to four. As we go to the top of the seventh inning, Henry Van Oz on for his second inning of work. And for the White Sox, it's gonna be the seven, eight, nine hitters led off by number five, Kyle Economides. And he takes the first pitch in for ball one. Count goes to one and one. Economides grounding out 0 for 3 with a bunch of ground outs either to short or second. That's how his outing's been. He takes that one in for strike two. Cubs let off the game with starting pitcher Wyatt Baskin, who's now over at short. And then they went to Eli Ferber after about two and two innings. Ferber ended up throwing a good three for him, and then they brought Henry Van Oz in to try and close it out as that one sails over the head of Econ Economides, and count goes to two and two. Two-two count, that one's in the dirt, and Childs behind the plate, not even gonna attempt to grab that one. Count goes full. And that one, as the coach is a little bit upset with that call, but home plate umpire electing a little bit outside. Konamides going down to first base with a leadoff walk for the White Sox here in the top of the seventh inning, and he's going to get a courtesy runner. So Konamides going back to the dugout. Now coming up for the Sox, it's going to be number nine, Thomas Gillenshaw. His courtesy runner, it's going to be number eight, J.C. Light, coming to run for Economides. J.C. Light over at first base, no outs. That brings up. The center fielder, Thomas Gillenshaw. Gillenshaw one for three this game with a single in the fifth. Went down on a couple of strikeouts in the second and third innings. And it looks like now having a little bit of discussion at the press box. For some reason, but looks like we got it all cleared up. We're back to it. Could could just be checking in J.C. Light as a courtesy runner in the game. Brings up Thomas Gillenshaw now with the runner at first, swinging at the first pitch to no avail, strike one. Van Oz now having to work out of the stretch. The leg lift and the pitch. This one's fouled over behind us to the backstop for strike two. Gillenshaw won in to put the bat on the ball here. And this top of the seventh inning. The White Sox leading eight to four. Trying to put a couple more runs on the board. A little bit more cushion for Bryson Knowles, who just came on last inning for the White Sox as the pitcher. And this one's hit to the left side. Could be a double play. It's Baskin stepping on second base bag and then throwing to Ferber for the 6 3 double play. So great job by Baskin there to field that and throw Gillenshaw out at first. That brings up the nine hole hitter, number 42, Ben Pelop. Pelop with a walk back in the fourth inning. And he looks at this one in the dirt for ball one. White Sox really struggled to hit Matthew Guyton in the previous game one. They actually came out and threw a no-hitter. They got one hit from Wyatt Baskin in the third inning, and they got one run from a hit-by-pitch from Guyton in the seventh. 
to Joe Hansen. Joe Hansen ended up coming around to score in that seventh inning, and that was the only run the White Sox got. Seven to five to one, they ended up winning, and this one hits Pelop, and Pelop has a little bit to say to the pitcher. It was kind of funny. Pelop was kind of walking out to the mound a little bit, but then he takes off and goes to first as he's struggling after getting hit on the leg with that pitch. And Pelop gonna try and run it off here, but I think he might need a courtesy runner. As, well, it looks like he's gonna stay on. He's gonna stay on first. I guess he just told coach he wasn't stealing anytime soon. After getting, taking a pitch to the leg there. That brings up top of the order now for the Sox. It's gonna be number 27, Kalina Lehan. Lehan 0 for 2 with a couple of walks, a strikeout, and had an RBI double in the fifth. They came around to score Pelop. And now has an opportunity here. This one's lined into right center field. He gets by the right fielder, Bookmeyer, and it goes all the way to the wall. They're gonna stop Pelop though at third base, and it's gonna be a stand-up double for Kalina Lehan. Lehan just ripping one into that right center field gap, and that's gonna send Pelop all the way over to third now. So White Sox possibly put a couple more runs on the board here for the bottom of the seventh inning. Now two runners in scoring position, second and third. That brings up. Their catcher, Patrick Fowler. Fowler, two for four on the day. Had a double, a single, and two strikeouts. Also has two runs scored for the White Sox. And this one's hit down the first baseline. It gets by the first baseman, Ferber. Goes in the outfield, and that's going to score two more for the White Sox. On the, the two-run single from Patrick Fowler. He just smacked that one down the first base line. Definitely a play Ferber could have got to, but he did not get in front of that ball. And Pelop and Lehan coming around to score from second and third. That brings the White Sox total now to 10. And we're back. Sorry about the technical difficulties there. While we were gone, there was a run scored. It was Patrick Fowler, the one who hit that two-run double. He came around to score off some wild pitches. And then Brayden Johansson, the batter after him, just got done walking from Henry Van Oz. So the White Sox now leading 11-4. to Brayden Johansson over at first base. There are two outs. And John Dominguez coming up to bat for the White Sox. As the Cubs have just struggled to stop 
the hitting from these White Sox, and he's taking off Johansson as this one's popped up over the second base side. Guyton trying to get to it, and he does. What an outstanding catch by, by Matthew Guyton. I can't believe that. What an outstanding catch going to his backside and diving for that play to record the final out of the inning. The Cubs giving up three there, though. The White Sox leading 11-4. to four. It's down to, the, down to these three outs for the Cubs. We'll be right back with the junior champion, Post Oak Little League Junior Championship. You're watching here on Bike Live. Bottom of the seventh inning, Cubs are down to three outs as they trail the White Sox here 11 to four. They're gonna be led off by their number two hole hitter, Wyatt Baskin, starting pitcher this game, struggling at the plate so far this game, 0 for three, a couple of ground outs and a fly out, takes the first two pitches outside for two balls. It's gonna be Kalino Lehan back on the mound for the White Sox to finish this game off as they have a seven run lead. They just scored three in the top of the seventh to put their total now to 11 as Lehan starting off against Baskin throwing three straight balls. We saw Lehan kind of comes off to a slow start, ended up walking the first batter of the game and now here four straight balls to Wyatt Baskin and he's gonna have a leadoff walk here in the bottom of the seventh inning going to be Matthew Guyton now coming on for the Cubs. Seven in the batter's box, the three-hole hitter. Guyton was the great pitcher in that game one for the Cubs. Ended up throwing a no-hitter and the Cubs ended up beating the White Sox five to one to take us now to a game two. And Guyton takes the first pitch in for strike one. Guyton one for three on the day with a single and a strikeout. Swing and a miss there for strike two. Lehan has been dominant so far in this game. He's pitched all seven innings except a couple there. Bryson Knowles came on to pitch the sixth. Swing and a miss there from Guyton. Couldn't hold up on that off speed. And he goes down on strikes for the first out of the inning. So one out for the Cubs, two left. Parker Childs up now, the cleanup hitter with the runner at first base and Wyatt Baskin. Lehan the leg lift in the pitch. And that one a little bit outside for ball one. Childs 0 for 3 on the day with three ground outs hitting all over the field. One to second, one to short, and one to third. Be interesting if he hit one to first base. And here it is, popped up over the first base side. It's Owen Smith. And couldn't have called it better there as he flies out to the first baseman, Owen Smith, for out number two. 
Cubs down to one more out for their championship hopes as when the bottom of the seventh inning, Henry Van Oz up, Lay on the pitch, first pitch is in there for strike one. Henry Van Oz, two for two with two singles, got a hit by pitch and also has two runs scored for the Cubs, probably the best player you could have in this position. He hits this one and it just goes foul right to the left of that first base line. Or right to the right of that first base line, excuse me. So the count goes to 0-2. Now the Cubs are down to one strike. They played a terrific game, terrific game one, and now scoring four here in this game, looking like it's not going to be enough for them. Down to one strike, 0-2 the count. And that one runs high and outside for Lejon. Count now goes to one and two. And Baskin over at first base. Has, a, has taken big leads, but not running. And just as I say that, he takes off and runs, but that's it. Henry Van Oz swings through that one. And that's the final out of the final game. Two games we had to play out here at the Post Oak Little League Junior Championship as the White Sox went down to the Cubs in game one, five to one, as Matthew Guyton was able to throw a no-hitter. Absolutely, great job, enjoy the win. Just got done talking with Kalino Lehan's father. He was out here in the outfield and enjoying his company out here this weekend as his son just pitched a terrific game and had some really nice hits there to close out the inning. What a game for us. What a game for me and everybody here, part of the Post Oak Little League Junior Championship. It's been a fun one. Ended in two games, but the White Sox are gonna come out with the win 11 to four. What a journey it's been for them as they were one of the middle of the pack teams, not necessarily the favorite coming into this playoffs and what a great job these kids have done out here this week it's just been tremendous I really want to thank all the guys that came on the broadcast with me all the special guests all the kids we had as well as well as want to thank uh, Brian Bennett for coming on and calling the first game with us as well as everybody else that's helped me out here at Post Oak Little League one thing my producer Miguel and all the other producers that have helped me yeah out here so far this week. It's been a lot of fun. Really appreciate the camera people. And that'll be it for us in our broadcast. This, this was game two of the Post Oak Little League Junior Championship in the White Sox coming out away with the win over the Cubs 11-4. to Thank you for everybody for listening.